When the bar moves wrong, it's telling you something. When you fail a rep or fail to maintain proper technique, it leaves clues. Weakness leaves clues. When you do a brand new exercise, uh, you can learn ways to why you're having trouble in other exercises. A few months ago, almost a year ago actually, I started doing front squats and I learned something very amazing. Uh, when I forced myself to stay upright for front squats, then transferred them to high bar back squats in the same training session, the exercise became much easier. It wasn't just a lot easier, it was almost too easy. The back squats were. They were easier because I learned to stay more upright. I almost overcompensated to stay upright in a front squat while learning it so that when I went to the high bar back squats, it was like I had a perfect bar path. The common problem in back squats, low bar or high bar, is a dreadful good morning squat when the hips shoot up too soon. Much of the time this tells us our quads are weak. This is true, but only partially true. But the main truth is that the pattern is weak. When a weight gets too heavy in a back squat, the good morning pattern prevails, not just because your quads aren't strong enough, but it's because your pattern to stay upright is oblivious. It can't remember how to do it. In a previous video, I talked about how bad technique can be overcome by more strength. I mention it here because if you feel that you're strong but are having trouble with certain movements and certain at certain weights, it's probably because your technique sucks too much. So work on your technique more, work on your skill more, and you'll hit a new PR from just improving technique. If there's one thing we know about the squat and deadlift, it's that the bar path can pretty much tell you everything. In a bad squat, aka a good morning squat, the technique is bad because the bar moves forward. Heavy barbells move in vertical lines. If there is a shift forward or backward, it tells us that there is a loss of efficiency. Don't leave power on the table. Don't leave strength on the table. Work on your technique. You gotta work on your technique every single time you train. You don't just move weight. You want to focus on making sure that the bar moves like it should. You want to make sure your spine moves like it should. And in the case of heavy barbell lifting, the spine should not move, or it shouldn't move a whole lot. A, oh, like the butt wing, for example, is an example of that. That's a spine moving under load. But of course, that's another argument, which I'll save for another day, another day. Now here, doing sumo deadlifts, the skill I'm learning related to a front squat is learning how to stay more upright. It is a skill. It is something that you have to train. And if you learn how to stay upright, there's a lot of things you're going to be able to do. The major bottleneck in staying upright has a lot more to do with mobility. And mobility is a big thing. Being able to move in the right movements. Keep the bar where it should be. Because the problem is with a lot of people and with my experience lifting, what I've noticed with the pitch forward good morning is that although I'm moving forward, what ends up happening is I'm able to build the strength in my back. And although this sounds like a great idea, it kind of messes with consistency with being able to move heavier loads. One thing I did notice also that's sort of interesting is that when I got more deep into my back squat session, when I used to squat heavy, when I didn't have all these elbow and knee problems, what happened was that the bar would learn how to get further and further back down my back. So what this did, it automatically corrected my bar path. The bar path was almost perfect because the bar was finally sitting on a low bar position. It's almost like it went there sort of unintentionally. It took a little while. This is kind of when I was new to squatting. You kind of learn that over time as you get more into powerlifting, more into strength sports, more into just getting better with lifting, you begin to realize that physics is the ultimate judgment, the thing that you are fighting against. You are moving heavy loads and you have to obey gravity. You need to work with gravity and that is you can't have the bar move in a way that is least efficient because if you do, you leave power on the table. Now if you uh, have never sumo deadlift or you've never done power cleans or you've never done front squats, which is possible, or maybe you don't do a lot of these exercises, if you happen to try to learn them, they can be really frustrating because they're frustrating because you're learning a new language. It's like learning a new language that's it's not just like learning, let's say you speak English and then you try to learn Chinese. It might be a little frustrating, but you know that it's Chinese. You know, makes a lot of sense, right? It's a cold, totally different language. The problem with like front squats and sumo deadlifts and power cleans is that at least the sumo deadlifts and power clean or a sumo deadlifts and front squats are at least pretty much similar to regular squats and conventional deadlifts. 
But the fact is, it's a brand new technique. Although it's very similar, you're essentially having to learn a, a language that is similar to English. And it's frustrating because you feel like you should be stronger, that you should be able to lift more. In the case of the sumo deadlift, my conventional is so much more stronger than my sumo that I really have to take out the reference points for what I think is appropriate. For instance, a 405 pound uh, conventional deadlift is a very light working weight for me. But for sumo, it is ridiculously heavy. I'm, I, sh I can sumo a, a 405 pound deadlift. I can do a sumo deadlift for 405 pounds. But the problem is I'm going to break technique. And that's kind of why I'm taking the time to not lift heavy on learning these days. You're taking the time to learn the skill. And if you really want to get good at anything, you got to be patient, and you got to be, you got to realize, you got to hone your craft. You can't just go into the gym and just follow your numbers. There's a way that you should lift, and that's something you should think about. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed them. Um, leave a comment below. Click like if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next video.